happy to introduce a professor who wakes up and is already in a suit <laughs> and has a list of accomplishments that don't even fit on one page. <laughs> um, and I'll just remind you that he's a double Cornelian and he cares about us more than any of his other schools. He may have helped you gain another $20,000 in a salary or save $5 on your oil change. You guessed it, Professor Alan Filipowicz is our hero. He started our journey at Johnson by teaching leading teams and reminding us that even though we're in an MBA program, we're not all robots. We learned how to more effectively understand others and influence them. And we figured out that you can fill an auditorium if you urge students to watch a movie about 12 angry men. I also had the fortune of having him as a professor for a class on negotiations, where we learned how to effectively prepare for a negotiation, split the pie, grow the pie, remain, maintain a relationship, and use checklists. He helped me realize that the reason my sister was getting more from my parents all these years was because she would just ask for things. It was that simple. I was then able to transfer that to things that actually mattered. Professor Filipowicz, we appreciate everything that you have taught us so that we can go out and get what we want, just as you have done with your career. As we welcome him to the stage, there may be a delay because we know he has to shake everyone's hand before he does that. <laughs> 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 Professor Filipowicz, everyone. <laughs> So my, my, time is, uh, my time is up, apparently, and that works out very well. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can get this to work. Uh, thank you for inviting me. It's, it's quite an honor. Now, let's see. <laughs> I thought about this, and I thought, well, what we need to do here is to come up with a new Pareto-efficient frontier. I want to get to a point where I can't say anything more useful without making it less funny, or can't say anything less funny without making it less more funny without making it less useful. You'll see I'll fail quite miserably on this. And, and I, was thinking, I was thinking about this challenge, and, and I was stuck. And then I thought about limiting conditions. These limiting conditions saved me, and here they are. Now, unfortunately, that was a brilliant introduction that ruined my first three jokes. You guys play along, all right? So do you remember, do any of you remember anything at all from leading teams? Anything at all? Okay, how about, <laughs> how about from negotiations, right? And, and so the question is, you know, why would your memory improve now? I could pretty much say anything I wanted and you would forget it, right? That gives me lots of degrees of freedom. And somebody said, no, 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 that's not true because this will be videotaped and it goes up on YouTube. So, so I went to YouTube, to, I did this uh, two years ago, I think, right? I went back and I looked at my talk from two years ago. And then I looked at it from another device, bringing my view count up to two. <laughs> Here's the other thing that saves me. Context matters, or technically, why we don't solicit advice from lottery winners. Now, Professor Russo will hopefully talk to you about, is this survivorship bias? You'll tell them. What? <laughs> See the issue, right? Whatever I tell you is going to be irrelevant. So these two things give me lots and lots of room to suggest anything, right? Because you probably won't remember, and if you do remember, it's probably wrong. All right, given that context, let me give you, I think I've got five bits of advice. Are you guys ready? Five bits of advice, here we go. Insight number one, the world is not fair. That is Mumbai. This is Cornell. You are the beneficiaries, right? The world is not fair, and you are the beneficiaries of this. Now, I've got a couple of stories to illustrate why, why this might be useful. Uh, here's the first story. So I'm, I'm currently Dean of Executive Education. In that role, I was recently at a party at, it's debatable. It's either the most expensive bit of real estate in Mumbai or the second most expensive bit of real estate in Mumbai. They don't want to talk about it. It really is the apartment, it's the penthouse, well, it's the building, he has the whole building. Um, 
It was the penthouse apartment with the infinity pool in the middle of the city, right? It was stunning. This is what billions and billions of dollars and a lot of taste will buy you. And I was standing there at the edge of this infinity pool looking out, and I thought, yeah, that's a pretty good view. Not quite as good as the view from the top of the bookstore, but still a pretty good view. In other words, we don't realize the extent to which things are stacked in our favor, right? Now, there's variance, right? There's heterogeneity of it. I'm standing here as, as a, I'm a 50-some-year-old white male. Pretty much that's it, right? That's, I, I have won the deck stacking lottery. That being said, you guys are also in this group, right? Now, what are the implications of this? Well, there are two things. There are two things. One is understanding that the world is not fair makes it easier for you to get back up again. Right? It makes it easier for you to get back up again. And so I have two daughters. They're 8 and 10. They play soccer. <laughs> they were off at their soccer game. And the game was being refereed by the father of one of the girls on the other team. What do you think will happen? Right? And so, and so my girls, my girls, um, <laughs> my girls said, it's not fair, and stopped playing. Well, that's not a very helpful reaction. Of course it's not fair. The world is not fair. You, those two, really are the beneficiaries of this unfairness. So when things wobble a little bit against you, that's too bad, right? Get up and keep moving. Here's the second reason why this is important. Uh, the second reason why this is important is I'm going to tell you a self-revelatory story. This is our last chance to get closer. Here we go. This is a brand new jacket. It's a brand new jacket because I nearly wore the green jacket that was in the picture. And I thought that would look bad, so I have a new jacket now. <laughs> it's difficult to get a new jacket because that green jacket is, is a silk linen combination, which is not normally made. And so I like that for the summer in Ithaca. So I found this one. I'm not sure yet if this is a good jacket or if I should be selling cars, but that's not the important bit. The important bit, the important bit is I had this jacket on for exactly three seconds. I counted exactly three seconds until a bird decided, why not? Why not? Right? Now, think about your reaction to that story. Right? Here is someone who got a brand new jacket, stepped out of the parking garage, and a bird, you know, sort of did whatever it is that birds need to do, right, on my jacket. There's an instance or an inkling of thought where you think, what kind of a guy, can I, can I use technical terms, terms, right? What kind of a guy goes out and gets a bird dropping on him? Do you notice that? You have a millisecond when you think to yourselves, um, it's his fault. And that thought comes out of the idea that the world is just and fair. And it's not. That's why understanding that the world is not fair is so important. OK. Uh, <laughs> Here's the second insight. Continue to make mistakes. Continue to make mistakes. We told you very early on, when you started this, this, uh, this program, this is your chance to make mistakes. And then. In, in the most viewed last lecture ever by someone over there, uh, a very important message came out, which is, you're graduating now, you're in the real world, stop screwing around, things count now. My point on this is that it's getting more expensive to make mistakes, but it's much cheaper than the alternative. It's much cheaper than the alternative. And I know this because, as I said, I'm Dean of Executive Education, Lots of companies come up to me. I'm currently working with one of the biggest pharmaceutical companies, and they tell me that their people are horrified of making mistakes. They're horrified of making mistakes. I said, well, how are you going to learn? How are you going to develop? Remember, this is a massive, rich company filled with research scientists, and they do not want to make mistakes. It's hilarious. In fact, it is. It is it is literally hilarious because I'm, I'm in discussions with them, and they say, hey, we want, we're all about innovation. We want you to tell us about innovation. 
And I say, innovation involves risk-taking. They're like, yeah, risk-taking, we want that. Innovation involves screwing up. Yeah, screwing up, we want that. And I said, OK, that, that sounds reasonable to me. And then they say, oh, yeah, by the way, we're going to need your slides a week in advance. And so I laughed at them. I said, that seems to be not a focus on innovation. That seems to be a focus on execution, right? Not exploration, execution. Are you sure? And they said, yeah, we're pretty sure. And I said, you realize how ironic and silly this is? And everybody laughed. They're like, absolutely. That was, that's crazy. Why do we do this? And I laughed with them. And then I hung up the phone. <laughs> 15, 15 minutes later, I get an email. Yeah, we are going to need those slides, though. <laughs> Making mistakes, incredibly important that you continue doing this. It's expensive. It's cheaper than the alternative if and only if you own the consequences and you learn, right? You own the consequences and you learn. All right. Here's insight number three. Uh, back to that graph, right? So I'm pretty sure I'm up here now, right? Because <laughs> I'm not out there, right? Not, OK. But we'll, we'll keep going. Insight number three. Here we go. I'm really, really smart. What should I do now? This is a question you are asking yourselves. Here's, here's my recommendation. People hate being reminded of certain things, particularly stupid people, right? They don't want, no one wants to be told, I'm really, really, you, you, I'm going to try to line up the preposition, no, no, the, the pronouns on this one, ready? Here we go. Nobody wants to be reminded of the fact that you are incredibly smart. That just annoys people. You are looking at me like this is a surprising <laughs> statement. <laughs> This is not surprising. You guys are really, really smart, and you're insanely well-educated. Going out and telling people this will only annoy them a lot. It will annoy them a lot. Here's what you do instead. People love stories. And so what you should do is use your big framework-filled brains to turn complicated things into fun stories. That's your job. If you can do that, you can have a big impact. In fact, if you can do that, then you'll be out there. Right? Useful and funny. Unless, of course, there are some of you, and, and I know this exists, there are some of you who want to come back for PhDs, in which case you can go there. <laughs> Useful, not funny. And, and you guys see the setup, right? Someone can go there, but I have to figure out who to insult. Okay, we're going to leave that one alone. All right, here's insight number four. Play to win. So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, um, can I tell one more story? All right, here's another story. My daughters play soccer, as I told you. Uh, a couple weeks ago, there was a horrible rainstorm. The away team came. They canceled the game at the last minute. And so there's these poor girls who had, who had traveled. These are 10-year-old girls, right? They had traveled at least an hour to get to our field. Game is canceled. So they're sitting there dejected. And there are only six of them, and they needed eight to play or nine to play. Uh, so they were, they were down one or two people. And so we said, hey, we should just scrimmage. And they said, we're short people. We said, that's no problem. We'll give you two of our people. You're here anyway. The refs are here. The field is here. Let's just play. You're 10-year-old girls. And they said, great. You know what would make it easier for us to field a full team? If the dads stepped up as goalies. That way we could field the entire team, and the dads would be goalies. I said, great. And they said, you're a dad. You're a goalie. I'm like, OK, I can do that. Now, those of you who understand soccer right, or football, Know that the goalie position is a very privileged one. You can use your hands. You can abuse anyone in your area, and the ref will call it against the other player. <laughs> right? It is a very, very powerful position. If you are also a dad, and these are 10-year-old girls, things could get ugly fast. <laughs> and so I did what I thought was the right thing, which is I would stand there, I would catch balls that were shot directly at me, but I wouldn't aggressively dominate a whole third of the field. I thought that was right. And then the other team scored on me. And when that happened, my own daughter walked over and shouted, what are you doing? <laughs> so I tried to explain to her, this is sportsmanship. There's a, there's a, right? You know what happened next? Quarter ends. They tossed me. <laughs> now. It gets better because they went to another dad. This other dad is a coach. This is a Division I athletics coach. This guy is a really good athlete. He's also a sieve. They shot maybe five or 10 past the <laughs> It was awesome. But even better than that was the dad on the other team. Do you know what he was doing? He was playing for real. 
he would run out, he would grab the ball from the girls, he would punt it three quarters of the way down the field, he'd go, this is my house. <laughs> <laughs> Play to win, but make sure you pick the right game. Now, you guys are all together in a class. Right? Up until now, it's kind of fun to compete with each other. But now it's a different game. It's a different game. Go out, play to win, but recognize that you're not playing to get slightly better than the other people in the class. You're playing to get slightly better than lots of other people. It's a different game. Last idea. This is the mandatory exhortation. Save us. Seriously, in a few weeks, you're going to become officially awesome. I want you guys to go out and do something useful. Thanks so much.